This is Beverly Hills. And here comes the Beverly Hillbilly. Sure, are doing some high powered rocking. I'm doing some high powered thinking. Thinking and rocking goes together. <laughs> well, tell me, Granny, what is this problem that's got you to rocking so? It's us, Jed. We don't belong out here. These la de da city folks don't want our kind around. Well, whatever put that notion in your head? Well, here it is, pert near Christmas. Back home, folks should be stopping by. Passing the time of day, fetching presents, and hefting a friendly jug with us. Well, you gotta remember one thing, Granny. Back home, we knowed everybody, and everybody knowed us. Out here, we ain't much acquainted yet. You can't get acquainted with these folks out here. I've been trying all morning. I put on my friendly hat, wrung out my rocker, and a jug of hard cider, and I've been sitting here waving and hollering at folks, and and a pointing to my jug. And nobody stopped? Only a policeman. That's where my jug went. He took it to the police station. I bet you got a bunch of friends down there by now. You might as well face it, Jed. We ain't got as many friends out here as a horse has toes. Looks like you spoke too soon, Granny. You ought to come Miss Drydale, and she's fetching a present. Dale. Will you please take this animal and keep it here? Well, thank you very kindly. And will you please tell Ellie Bay that we have a pet ordinance? Well, I'd rather not. She'll be wanting one. <laughs> Come on, sit down, Miss Drysdale. We'll chew the fat and heft to jug together. 30,000 people in Beverly Hills. How did I get you as my neighbors? Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> if I find any more animals in my flower garden, I will give them to the police. They wouldn't appreciate it. Why, they took my jug without so much as a thank you, buy your leave, or kiss my foot. Oh, I do hope the new year will be better. Well, thank you, and the best wishes to you, too. <laughs> Granny, you gotta admit I was right friendly. Nice fat little goat, too. You can stop your fretting, Thelma. Pa's done found your baby. Her and Earl and Albert and me's been looking all over the house for that little rascal. Well, me, is this your baby goat? Well, Thelma's her ma, but they's both mine. Come on, everybody, let's go swimming. <laughs> well, if that ain't a new low and gift giving, I'll put in with you. Getting our own goat gift to us. Uh, Granny, don't get riled up yet. Here comes some more friends. Well, that's the bus fetching Jethro home from pot school. In the middle of the morning? Oh, and look who's driving. Ms. Millicent Schuyler Potts herself. Reckon she's come to visit. Howdy there, Miss Potts. Good morning, Mr. Clambest, Granny. I wonder if I could have a talk with you. Well, you betcha. You see, Granny, she's come to visit. Hey, Granny, can I have some vittles? What'd you do with your school lunch? Oh, I ate that at recess. <laughs> All right, help yourself. Yeah! Oh, uh, bye, Miss Potts. Thanks for the ride. You want to come into the kitchen and have some grits and jowls with Jethro while we visit? Uh, no, thank you. Well, uh, set yourself. You can have a bench, a bucket, or a rocker. Uh, no, what I have to say is quite brief. It's simply that Jethro has become my number one problem student. Well, did you hear that, Granny? You deserve all the credit, Miss Potts. I beg your pardon. Well, when Jethro started in your school, he couldn't cipher a problem for shucks. But now he's number one. Come on into the house. We'll have to jug on that. Oh, really, you don't understand. Your nephew is a most disrupting influence. 
Well, let me put it this way. It will not be necessary for Jethro to return to school after the holidays. That's smart, is he? You done it, Miss Potts. Why, back home, he couldn't even keep up with his class. And here he is graduating ahead of everybody. <laughs> no, no, please. Jethro... I'll get the jug. No, Jethro is not graduating. He is being expelled. Oh, I don't know how to say this, but Jethro is ruining my school. And I do not want him to return. Well, for not knowing how, you said it pretty plain. <laughs> Jethro ain't good enough for you, huh? What? Simmer down. Well, you can keep your old private school. <laughs> Jethro has been there a whole year, and you haven't even made him a private. You couldn't even get him into the army. <laughs> Gertrude's are doing. If a rooster can swim, so can a turkey gobbler. How about it, Herman? You willing to try? Well, let's shake hands on it. Atta boy. Come back here, you vile beast. Come here with my begonia. Mrs. Drysdale, I sure would appreciate if you wouldn't chase Thelma. It shakes her all up. Ah! Help! Get this thing off me! I'm going to call the police and have all these animals taken away. Why, they ain't done nothing. This is Beverly Hills, not a jungle. They shall all be locked up in cages. Don't do that, please. They wouldn't be happy all caged up. But I won't be happy until they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> ah! That vicious dog is going to attack me! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Seaman Pond. But well, that's Miss Drysdale. <laughs> She's trying to steal Ellie's chicken. Probably wants to give us that for New Year. <laughs> you get your chicken picking hands off our livestock. <laughs> Margaret, I'm very busy. I haven't time to listen to goat stories. <laughs> Stop sneezing. Uh, what pool? With your clothes on? I thought you were having some of your bridge club ladies over this afternoon. Well, stop sampling the punch. Oh, I'll call you back. Gesundheit. Aren't you about through? You haven't finished dictating. Not you, him. Sandy, se non ti stai fermo, non posso fare niente. Go away, leave me alone. So, Mr. Drysdale's our friend, is he? That didn't sound very friendly to me. Go away. We'll go away, but not until you fill these sacks with our money to tote with us. Uncle Jed's got $40 million in your bank, and we got four sacks. And dividing four into 40, that figures to 10 million in each sack. Ooh, listen to that boy Safford. That's one thing we're going to miss about Beverly Hills. Just we're getting a fine education. What are you talking about? Where are you going? We're going back home, Mr. Drydale. You mean for Christmas? No, ma'am, for good. What? We got to face up to the truth. Where is out of place here is four cobs and a cream crock. All right, young'uns, take those sacks down to where they keep our money and commence filling them up. No, wait, listen, come back. Oh, get out of my way. Quickly, come with me. Now, wait right here and don't move. Measure him up for a complete uh, vestito nuovo. Oh, si, sí, si. Sí. <sighs> well, little man, uh, if you're fixing to tie me up, uh, that ain't enough rope and you ain't enough man. Dovete stare fermo, altrimenti non posso fare niente, sa? Chief. Well, phone down, have them lock the outside doors. But it isn't closing time. It will be if the clampers withdraw their money. <laughs> now, if you ever get to be this big, draw me again. 
<laughs> Senor Drysdale, are you talking to me? What did you do that for? He was fixing to tie Jed up. Monkey little feller, throw this skimpy little rope around me real brave. No, no, he was just measuring you for a new suit. A Christmas present for me. Uh, oh, help me get him down. You fill my sack up for me. I got a few words to say to Mr. Drysdale before we go. Granny, this little fellow was just fixing to sew me up some clothes like he done for Mr. Drysdale here. Shame on you for doing woman's work. And bad, too. You call this sewing? Uh, Why, them clothes wouldn't hold together in a stout wind. <laughs> Don't you sash me, little man. I'll hang you back on that hook. No, no, I am not. Oh, Granny, they won't give us your money. Let's get the guns off in the truck. Hey, we're yes. going to fuel the bank? Down to the last man. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's talk this over. It's too late for talking. We is feuding. Now, Granny, he's talking before we is doing any feuding. Uncle Jeb, Granny. Hey, look at here what I got. I just captured me the first prisoner. <laughs> Turn her loose. But she's one of the bank people. Maybe she can get our money for us. Can you? No, I can't. I can't, Jethro. Capture me. <laughs> Mr. Clappin, let's talk this over. We will. All right, sit down, everybody. We're going to have a confab. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to have a confab. Your Uncle Jed told you to turn her loose. Now do it. <laughs> oh, shucks. Somebody's always taking the fun out of feud. <laughs> then along come Ms. Potts and expel Jethro out of her school. And him the number one student. Just your ciphering problems, Granny. <laughs> oh, I won a football championship for the sixth grade, too. Yeah, who was it you beat in that last game, Jethro? Uh, some outfit they call themselves, uh, the Rams. <laughs> Believe me, I can explain everything that's happened. You can? Yes, I can. Well, how about your wife said she was gonna lock up all my critters? And mean mouthed me when I pulled her out of the pond. Oh, I can explain it. No, I have a better idea. I'll have my wife and Mrs. Potts talk to you themselves, and they can explain it. They can? They can, and they will. I'll get them on the carpet, uh, the phone, right away. Yes, sir. I'll leave my desk, Mr. Trigo. Mr. Clapton, Granny, Jethro, Ellie Mae, it's almost Christmas. Peace on Earth, goodwill toward men, especially to bankers. <laughs> now, please go back to your home, that is, the home in Beverly Hills. And everything will be explained to your to your satisfaction. Well, that seems fair. Come on, family, let's go. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now, on your way home, if you see anything you want for Christmas, just pick it up and charge it to me. Hot diggity dog! <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Come on, Uncle Jed, I done picked up my present. <laughs> Yes, you will. And if I refuse? If you refuse, the only thing you will find in your stocking on Christmas morning is your foot. <laughs> I'm married to a bourgeois beast. You are married to a desperate banker. <laughs> and now I'll reason with you, Mrs. Potts. Let me start by reminding you that I hold the mortgage on your building. So? So? How would you like to have the only private school in Beverly Hills holding classes on the sidewalk? <laughs> this is blackmail. This is extortion. So? So? Uh, I'll do it. All right. Now, here's what you're going to tell Jed Clampett. So, you see, Mr. Clampett, I, I expelled Jethro so that I could come here every evening and give him private instruction. Well, won't there be a lot of extra trouble for you, Miss Potts? Oh, nothing is too much trouble if it brings me nearer to the man who's captured my fancy. Well, who's that, ma'am? Oh, Mr. Clampett. <laughs> Can't you guess? No, ma'am. Only men folks around here are Jethro and me. You see Jethro every day and that only leaves... <laughs> Yes, I must say it. I'm forced to say it. It's you. But, um, you could... But, I, but you're 
fine, educated, high-class, big city school teacher. But I'm also a woman. And you're a man. Yeah, I gotta go along with you on that, but... <laughs> huh? And the kind of a man I've always been attracted to. Raw bone, shy, clean cut. But basically, very, very masculine. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dear. Oh, Milford, no, no! Oh, Margaret, yes, yes. Now, Granny is lonesome. She doesn't have any friends. Your bridge club is the answer. Granny doesn't even play bridge. But you're going to teach Granny to play bridge. Home, quickly. Oh, now, dear, now. It's not going to be as bad as all that. You'll have Mrs. Potts to help you and Jane Hathaway, too. But even if she learns to play bridge, how could I possibly present that homespun hillbilly to my club? Miss Hathaway is taking care of that. Granny will look fine. Oh, come in, come in. <laughs> You are just in time to see your hostess and her beautiful new hostess gown. Granny, entrez vous. <laughs> oh, Granny, you are a vision of a chic Beverly Hills hostess from your head right down to your... <laughs> My bloomers are showing again. This thing ain't sold together properly. <laughs> Granny, those smart capris are supposed to show, but where are your beautiful pumps? They were pumped up too high. I fell off of them twice. <laughs> well, your, your feet won't show under the bridge table. What kind of a table? Bridge. Mrs. Drysdale here and some of her friends are going to play bridge with you. Oh, yeah? Who says? <laughs> she says, my wife has a club. Well, she better have more in a club if she's going to walk on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Granny. Bridge is a game, a card game. A fun game. Now, Margaret, you and Miss Hathaway take Granny into the card room and get things ready. I'll send in Miss Potts. Where is she? Her and Jed are sparking in the parlor. <laughs> Miss, here's a little verse I made up for you whilst I was changing my duds. Why, how very flattering. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling, Millie sent just to see me every evening to such trouble you have went. <laughs> you expelled my nephew Jethro just to give you a excuse, and your mind said, don't you do it, but your heart yelled, what's the use? I'm a man and you're a woman You yourself did up and say Now you got my heart to wondering Are you the Martha Ellie May? Oh, oh, Mr. Drysdale Don't let me interrupt Oh, no, 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 no I want you to come in and, and hear the perfectly divine ballad That Mr. Clampett has composed Just for me Where's your wife? Well, she's going to teach Granny to play bridge. They need a four, so I'd better get oh, back. Oh, no, no, no. Three women and one man. Unthinkable. Now, you just stay right here and listen to Mr. Clampett's ballad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my da... I'm sorry, Mr. Drysdale, but I feel like a darn fool singing this to you. <laughs> You're right. Besides, I have some very exciting plans that will keep you busy for the rest of the day. You do? Yes. I want you to be a guest at my club. We'll shoot a little golf. Oh, you mean go over to the uh, golf pasture? Well, we call it the country club. Uncle Jed, I don't want to watch them women play a sissy old card game. Well, uh, why don't you come with us, Jethro? We're going to shoot some golf. Yeah, I'd like that. But you ain't going to go shooting in your court and clothes, are you? Oh, I reckon I'd best change. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Drydale, no use you waiting for us. Uh, Jethro and me will meet you there. All right, Jethro. I'll see you at the country club. And uh, meet me in the locker room. I'll have some golf clothes for you to change into. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Holy 
it right there. You done give us 12 cards. That's right. You fix it to give us one more? Yes. Each player receives 13 cards. Not this player. Nobody gives me 13 or nothing. <laughs> but, Granny, that's the way bridge is played. Not by me. Give me your lucky dozen. You keep the rest. Oh, Granny, this is oh, the way Please, please. let's all just play with 12 cards. <laughs> no. Take the other card, Granny. I might give you a slam. Why, you? Why, you? Well, here we are. These two lockers are for you and Jethro. Somebody's clothes in there. I got them for you. Now, I want you to change into these clothes before we play golf. Then we'll spend a nice, relaxing half hour in the steam room over there. Oh, yes, sir. Now, when you change, leave your old clothes inside the locker and close the door. I'll see you outside. Well, Jethro, you're younger and more willowy than me. You try it first. Yes, sir, Uncle Jim. <laughs> you know, all right, Jethro? I can't move, let alone change clothes. <laughs> These city fellers sure must be runts. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Well, there's one thing certain, we can't strip naked out here in the hall. <laughs> Tell you what, let's go over there into that steam room and wait for Mr. Drive Dave. Yes, <laughs> You can't see nothing through this little windy. Well, let's just go on in. Boy, Uncle Jeff, sure is hot in here. Right smart humid, too. <laughs> hey, look over here. There's rose benches going up, just like in a theater. Well, let's climb up to top, get us a good seat, wait for the show. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? Something go wrong with the bridge game? <laughs> sure enough did. Granny got robbed and busted it up. What riled you, Granny? Well, first off, them other women wanted me to put my cards down on the table so all of them could see them. <laughs> that don't hardly seem fair. Of course it don't. And when I asked them why, they said, because you're the dummy. <laughs> Ain't nobody calls Granny a dummy and gets away with it. You better believe it. How did you men folks make out at that there country club? Pitiful, just pitiful. Granny, they got the hottest, steamiest theater there is. If that wasn't bad enough, they put on the worst show I ever did see. That's a fact. Nothing but a bunch of fat old men parading around wrapped in towels. <laughs> and not even no music. Pitiful, just pitiful. Beverly Hills can keep their unfriendly city people. Come on, Ellie Mae, I want to get into some decent clothes and head for back home. Yeah, I reckon we better do that too, Jethro. These just kind of shrank up and soggy. <laughs> Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas.